Be prepared for confrontational images of violence, crime, drug trafficking, including bodily secretion of drugs and highly offensive language right from the very start and throughout. Some viewers may be extremely distressed by the real-life content and adult themes. In London 2016, according to the Metropolitan Police, there are 225 different gangs that are operating across the city. And for the first time on television, some of the capital's most dangerous young street gangs take us into their unique world. It's a world of extreme intimidation with both random and organized acts of violence and even murder. So if that means coming into your house with a gun, holding the gun to your child's head and saying to you, where is the fucking money? They will do it. And is driven by the desperate need to make money. I'm in country getting 2,200 a day. And the drug economy that provides it. 60 pounds for the, for the oh. big bags. I used to sell to a barrister. Uh, he was my favorite shot. I used to buy it. Two grams of crack off of me. The gangs are fearless and prepared to take on anyone. So basically I just took my Uzi out, stuck it out of the window and just kept on squeezing. Over six months, we were granted unprecedented access to the lives of street gangs. They invited us into their world on one condition, that they filmed themselves. I was born for this again, Big guns and everything, you see me? Any spares? We get busy, niggas know, check the crime rate, you get me? Check it. But we don't stab in it, we shoot niggas in it, you get me? Every, everyone on my team has hit something, yeah? Everyone. Fuck yeah. it, put it like that. This is the mini street, so you play, you get me? Mini street, so you play, you get me? I'm going to go on missions with these ones. I'm going to get low, innit? Yeah, I'm going to get low. If you see a nigga go on one knee, it's just no, it's no joke. You hear me? <laughs> low niggas. Low <laughs> niggas. <laughs> Police state that there are over 3,000 young people involved in street gangs in London alone. It's a dangerous place where shootings, stabbings, and murder have become an unfortunate way of life. During the course of filming, contributors to this series have been sent to jail for knife possession, shot, and murder. Like, I know two people that got shot last week. Like, if you touch one of my closest friends, then immediately I'm going to react. Your friend gets shot down, you want to shoot down a person. Same time, same day. It's as simple as that. Street gang culture and the associated violence is driven by the illegal activity of drug dealing and robbery. Hey, you can't trust people out there on the roads. And someone's trying to take what you made, you're going to retaliate. And it is all due to gang violence. It's a lawless world where some gang members are out of control and at war. A war that has played out across the capital from its inner city estates to its affluent suburbs. It's closer than anybody realizes. It's just because you think you live in a nice area, or just because you don't see it when you look out your window. Oh, love, you're just looking out the wrong window. It's a cycle of extreme violence where guns and knives are used to injure and kill. I don't think there's violence that I haven't seen before. I've seen people stabbed up, I've seen people die. Despite the huge risks, many young people see gang life as a way to get rich quick. Some are enticed by the excitement and high-octane lifestyle it can provide, while others simply wish to escape poverty. It was me and my gang of youths running around, just getting money. You're either ready to die, you're ready to go choke. Whoever survives, survives. There's gangs everywhere, like even in places you wouldn't even think. It's everywhere, man. There's white gangs, there's black gangs, there's all different kind of base gangs. In 2012, at just 18, Geordie became one of the leading drug dealers in South London as a member of the Woolwich Boys gang. I always wanted to be like, like a gang banger, because I was bad in all my school, so I wanted to be someone anyway. You know, I wanted to be like one of the boys in my hoods that I had respect when they come into the block and walk out of the block. Geordie's gang activities have left him facing serious charges. He's currently facing prosecution for possession and intent to supply crack cocaine and heroin. He could face a jail term of up to six years. Living around there is, 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 is kind of a struggle. Well, it was a struggle, wasn't it? It's a sad lifestyle around there because no one's got anything around there. I've seen a load of violence. I've seen uh, gunshots. When I was here with the Gaza, Feds running up on here all the time, people getting smacked up, 
stabbings, whatever was going on around there, it was the cars of So you can imagine being bought around there, you ain't really got no hope, man. Jordy first started selling drugs for the gang aged just 13. My gang was from because it was right outside my doorstep, and that was my family, that was my bread. I'm seeing new shoes, I'm seeing new bikes, I'm seeing new everything. I'm seeing the people pull up over there, the olders, getting the youngers in the cars, and I'm thinking, yeah, I like all this, you understand? And when children start seeing things like this, they think that it's normal, so they can do all these sort of things. So, shutting at 13, swear down right here is normal. So from chilling, smoking, it gets to doing robberies, to going shot, that's how it goes. So it's right outside your stuff that you can't do nothing about it. Just a bunch of hungry kids trying to survive. So trying to, try to make a living, trying to eat, trying to get the basics, trying to get the normal things what normal people get that we couldn't get. So that forms the gang. Obviously from young, I was literally posted outside my ass like this. This is where things used to go down. But now we're going upstairs. It's the stash here, but it's locked. It's locked, man. You can see anyone that's coming. Jump on the roof if police come. No more. I was functioning like, yo, I just turned into a monster them time. No one could have handled me. I got kicked out of every single school that I've been to. I don't even think I learned anything from any school. I feel I just learned on the roads. That's how I got, that's how I survived. I think I was actually 14 when I got nicked with intent to supply and I got sentenced at 15. After going to prison for supplying Class 8 drugs, Jordy's mum sent him away to Paris to live with his dad. However, this new life on the continent would only serve to fuel his gang ambitions. Be prepared for confrontational images of violence, crime, drug trafficking, including bodily secretion of drugs and highly offensive language throughout. Some viewers may be extremely distressed by the real life content and adult themes. Jordy grew up in London, selling drugs for the local gang, the Woolwich Boys. After going to prison for selling crack and heroin at 15, his mum sent him to Paris to live with his dad. But this is where Jordy gained the insight that would draw him even further into gang life. Whenever Jordy is in Paris, he drops in on his old friends and cousin, who now runs a gang in the tough suburbs of Paris where Jordy grew up. Bandona Bando! <laughs> so right now we're going to my cousin's block. Obviously, me, like I said, I've come out of that bullshit. But it's always good to go show your cousin's love and that, show your family love. We're in the block, we're in the bando. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. The block in Cachon, on the outskirts of Paris, is a regular spot that the gang sell their drugs from. There's weed, ash as well. Obviously, over there they smoke a bit of ash as well. Okay. 60 pounds for the big bags. 20 bags for the small for the small bags. 30 pounds. The G10 10 10. There's 10 there as well, little 10 10 10 there. Good shit. Yeah. Yeah. His cousin AK explains how he started running his gang. Moi, ici, ça c'est mon bloc, hein? Tout ça c'est à moi, à mes amis. Euh, point de chute là, ici drogue, chute, marijuana, euh, zeb, en bas, cocaïne, héroïne. Moi je suis arrivé ici, j'avais 8 ans. 8 ans, je suis arrivé ici, j'ai déjà trouvé des gens. C'est-à-dire moi j'ai trouvé des gens ici sur place, ils m'ont accueilli, ils m'ont ouvert les bras, ils m'ont euh, venu avec eux, ils m'ont appris. Show them love, show voilà. them love. Voilà, c'est comme ça, c'est comme ça. In Paris, a gang will control the selling of drugs across an entire housing estate. In London, there can be more than one gang operating from an estate. In an undisclosed location in London, a gang films their active drug operations as they take delivery of a consignment of cocaine. It's one of London's most popular drugs, and this kilo is worth an estimated 55,000 pounds. Once broken down though, it can be sold on for over four times as much. Depending on its purity, 
these individual wraps will cost user anywhere between 30 and 150 pounds per gram. The gang sell harder drugs like crack cocaine, with the crack on the scales holding a street value of over 12,000 pounds. Another lucrative drug they sell is heroin. Dealing in hard drugs means gangs have to constantly protect themselves. Back in Paris, Jordi's cousin explains how it works there. When you grow up, you want to buy a Glock. You know? You're obliged to buy your arm to defend. Because no one wants to protect your family, your money. That's it? Yeah. It's my protection. Yeah, obviously, obviously, it's my protection. Every day, every day. Everyday protection, voilà. obviously. Là, comme ça, si like, quelqu'un vient like, ici, yeah. no one yeah. can't come in. No one can't come to my cousin. Voilà. That's what he's saying to si me. Si vient, shoot. Yeah, it's just light, light soft, light soft. That's what he is. Okay. Voilà, si nous on fait la loi. Yeah. Let me put it. But for AK, his love of gang culture is motivated by more than just the glamour of drugs and weapons. Nous, banlieue, euh, après 23 heures, euh, commerce, c'est fini. Euh, les transports, c'est fini. On est, on est bloqué entre nous. Donc on est obligé de faire du commerce. Voilà, illicite. Comme ça, on peut manger un peu. Parce que quand on monte sur Paris, c'est cher. La vie, elle est chère. Donc, tu, tu deal, tu voles, tu braques. Mais c'est c'est comme ça. C'est comme ça. Même si nos mamans, ils pleurent, tout ça, on, on ramène à manger. C'est comme ça. Comme des garçons, des hommes. Et en France, il n'y no a pas le choix. Parce que nous, c'est la mort tous les jours. Tous les jours. Paris gave Jordi the operational know-how that shaped his gang ambitions in London. Coming back from Paris, I got very inspired by that. They were doing it so neat and organized. So when I came back to London, the interaction was money. I knew I was going to be a bad man. I knew I was going to have cars, bitches, Gucci, Louis, everything. I knew it. This is my vision like, of being a gang, of a gang. This is what I wanted it to be. Two street gang members agreed to meet us to share what motivated them to join up. As you're growing up, you're seeing what other people have around you. And your eyes start to get big and then it's like, you want to live that life. And one of the main reasons people join gangs is the money, like the lifestyle that a gang's living. I think I joined the gang when I was 11. And that was all because they looked cool to me. Like, obviously, like, you have to build your name up in it. And I just moved there, I knew nobody. But I attached myself to these group of kids that I thought were cool and all that stuff. Uh, it was a perfect way for me to become a somebody. For Geordie to become a somebody, he had to move away from London's crowded drug markets and set up further afield. My country was Hampshire, innit? I turned over Hampshire nicely. How I started up my thing was going to a spot where I heard their numbers and I just looked for customers up there. As soon as I see a customer, yo, let me get into your house. They let me into the house, give them a tester. Right, this is good food, mate. I said, yeah, is it good food? Tell your friends it's good food as well. So from every customer, they would give me five numbers. And that's how you start an authentic phone-up. That's how I started an authentic phone-up. Geordie operated as far afield as Hampshire. Gangs now match their supply to wherever the demand exists. I don't think it's just us being corrupt. Like, I used to sell to a barrister. He's a regular customer. I was one of my good customers. I like him. I'm pretty sure he's locked a couple of people away for selling drugs. But still, I'm selling to this guy. These doctors, it's ridiculous. Bonnie and Clyde run a crack production operation from an affluent area in the capital. They not only retail to customers, but also supply to local gangs in their area. I was passed as a gang because the operation that I was running was a drug dealing gang and they said all these youths that's selling trucks with me were organized and so they classed us as a gang. A common story, Clyde started out dealing drugs to his friends. You start out selling weed, turn out now you're selling weed because your friends all smoke weed. You know, you gotta get more money. Start selling something else like a bit of MD, start whipping up coke, selling heroin as well. Certain people are better than others, innit? All you gotta do is pick up a bit of hard food and then boom, go find your shots, innit? The same as any marketing or anything. It is a business. What we do is a business. You're flipping crack and heroin. You make money of two different things. Money can be made. A lot of money can be made. Ah. 
Once Jordi established his customer base, he was determined to set to work to meet their expectations. I'm bagging up all night. I'll be bagging up raps and 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 raps. With the effort he put into the life, success was soon to come Jordi's way. People were begging to come work for me. They knew what I was on, they wanted a job to. 22 bags, 22 bills a day. I'm giving the person five bills a week. That's what I was on. Getting people to take two grand and come back. I'm getting someone to go to another spot, two grand come back. I wasn't that guy that had one little block. Like some people started talking up, they had one little block. I had three, three blocks. And then that's when I like, met my girlfriend, Alicia. When I met Jordi, I was kind of blown away by what he had, the money that he had, like the clothes that he had were like all name brand clothes. And I'm talking about Louis Vuitton this, Louis Vuitton that, Gucci this, Gucci that. They were luxury clothing and this guy was wearing them on a daily basis, like they were nothing. And I was just like, wow, this guy has kind of got a lot of cash. You know, don't just fall in love with that person, you kind of fall in love with the lifestyle as well. And then he approaches you, oh, can you get involved? Can you do this for me? Or can you do that for me? And you're like, you're thinking about it and you think, oh, why not? He's done all this for me. Or he's, you just think like, why not? Why, why shouldn't I really help? We're not always victims. Women are not always victims. Same way there is a different level for guys, there's different levels to us. So you have what you most probably hear about all the time, women get abused, they get um, passed around, stuff like that. They're the kind of, they're the kind of bottom of the pile. A lot of the guys that like, will, have sex with them and just basically do what they want with them, treat them like shit. And then you've got the next kind of level, which is the sometime-ish girlfriend, the girl that they go back to when they wanted a bit of loving or um, things like that. All the money really wouldn't be spent on her. She'd probably get a Nando's here and there. That's about it. When you go up to the full like girlfriend, they would know the business and be involved. And then you've got the next one up, which is like the wifey, the one that doesn't see anything. Um, she knows what her guy does. She, she knows full well what he does, but she doesn't get involved. An East London gang that is part of this lucrative trade, filmed as one of their crack dealers prepared drugs for sale. He begins by chopping crack into individual rocks that are sold for 20 pounds each. He makes a parcel containing £1,000 worth of crack, often referred to as a G-pack. He uses a condom to house his parcel. It's not unusual to carry a number of these drug packages at one time, though the risk involved is huge. I had to do things in it to keep my freedom, and it had to be done, so I'd done it. So I had to put things up my ass. I had to plug things up my ass doing trips on the motorway, doing probably three trips, plugging drugs, like at least three, four G-packs, like one G-pack, two G-pack, three G-packs, four G-packs. A gang supplier films the extreme measures he goes to in order to hide his valuable stash from the police and his enemies. We had to go to like nasty extents where customers are ringing every minute, every time. We're unplugging, plugging, unplugging, plugging, unplugging. And more times when we're unplugging, there's shit there. So literally we're just scraping the shit off the parcels, untaking it literally, unhygienic, like mad, serving, plugging it again, taking it back out. It was a serious organization that had to come with serious risk and nasty, nasty things. It's like standing at the door with a devil that, yeah, lose your dignity, you lose your name, but I'll give you money at the end of it. That's the extent we had to go to, to keep a business running. And that's how determined we was. Jordy was making just over 2,000 pounds a day and at the top of his game. I'm telling you, everything got achieved. The cars got achieved, the bitches got achieved. I had everything you could want. I'm talking penthouses, Range Rovers, black, the white one, Mercs. I wasn't even driving, that's how I did it. I was getting them out for people to drive me in them. I was a spender. I was getting parties, popping bottles, models, doing crazy shit. I was getting holidays, I had Bifar, Spain, Barcelona, 
I'm talking every single brand name, Giuseppe's, Balenciaga, Gucci, Louis, all of that, I had all of that, I've done that. I never had that at the young. You can, wow, how, how could you be humble? How could you be humble when you come from nothing? It just felt, it felt amazing, man. I was living like a footballer. Cause I thought I was gonna get 2,200 every day until I, I die. That's how you actually think. That's what do people do it for? Undeniably, the allure of fast money is irresistible to many. You know, you do fall in love with the money. By the time people are going to work in the morning, I've made your week wage in a day. Profit. So, you're going to want to do that for the rest of the month, for the rest of the year. A lot of gangs make a lot of money. It's the trucks and having nice shoes. You feel me? Having the top Louis Vuitton belt, looking the part, walking down the road, looking like the big person. That's, that's what it is when you're in that time when you feel like nobody can touch you. As the money came rolling in for Jordi and his gang, he and Alicia got a taste of the big league. In, in gang culture, guys at the top of the blocks and stuff like that, it is very much like the football culture. The, like, oh, you know when you get the uh, wags, the footballers' wives and stuff like that? Very much like that. Everybody used to know us in the race. When we walked in, everybody knew us. We used to be really well-dressed. We used to be coordinating most of the time. It brings respect from, from people. Yeah, man, I, I love that lifestyle, man. I thought it would never end. I thought it would never end, man. I thought I'm going to be like this forever and ever and ever. Be prepared for confrontational images of violence, crime, drug trafficking, and highly offensive language throughout. Some viewers may be extremely distressed by the real-life content and adult themes. The drug economy is key to the young street gangs operating across London. But their enterprise and endeavor count for little without the genuine means to protect themselves and intimidate others. This is a world where young gangs are robbing each other for drugs and money at gunpoint. And the weapons are fueling a seemingly never-ending cycle of violence. For those involved in the culture, age often determines what weapons are used. This is the little niggas. That growing up. Don't play with nice, but me. For my side snack and I never went back in it. For my for my boss, my team wants. I just kept busting the snack when you start smoking, you don't stop in it, you get me? I can't stop. Get me? My trigger fingers got chicken pox for it. Mad. Mad. Itching. Itching, jumpy. You see me? The resulting gang violence has left its mark on local communities. I've known violence all my life, basically. As far back as I can remember. Brixton was a no-go zone. Basically, this is, this is the front line, isn't it? This is where everything happened, isn't it? Quincy entered the gang world at the age of just 13. As he established his gang career, he gained a reputation for violence. The gang I was in was called the 28s. And basically, we were based in Brixton. It was like a setup friends that kind of turned into brothers that really never had no one apart from each other because most of us are probably homeless or just living on the streets. We got the kind of never say die, protect our area from other area kind of attitude. We used to stick together, fight together, represent Brixton and made Brixton kind of a fearful place. And that's why Brixton was kind of no-go zone for nearly every gang that existed at the time. I got more serious with it. More fighting, I'll be the first to fight now, don't worry, I'll sort him out, bang. And that's how I got my kind of name for myself. My name was based off kind of knocking people out. Violence was very key in me growing up around my area within my gang. Because without the violence, I wasn't Quincy. Do you know what I mean? I was just a normal kid. But with the violence, I became somebody. As Quincy and the 28s got older, their crimes and behaviour became more serious. This is where we kind of changed. We kind of got worse. We started to take, we started to smoke crack. And we started to just rob nearly everyone 
in the local areas to take mobiles, watch people coming out the bank, rob them. But you're still smoking at least six, seven hundred pounds of crack every night. We buy more crack, our habits are getting stronger and stronger. And then around here, hasn't even got enough money for us no more. So we're venturing out and starting to rob banks and stuff. But the crack obviously made us more braver to obtain that bigger money and bigger lifestyle. I became respected, I became feared. And so my violence kept me at the top of my circle, my peers. Today, street gangs are still reckless, now specializing in robbing cash-rich drug dealers and other gangs. Crack suppliers Bonnie and Clyde discuss the violence that underpins their world. Ain't no one gonna fuck with me because they know that I'll shoot you or I'll stab you if you come around and you, you try anything because I don't want nothing to jeopardize my money. That's just the way it is. There's no rules, but you gotta know how to, to play the game. Things become more dangerous when supplying drugs to rival gangs. One gang will have better food and the other gang won't. So a lot of the time like, we'll buy food off one gang and then sell it to another gang. Well, you don't want to get caught to selling to both sides. But I've got to make my money somehow. I don't care what I'm selling to. These people may be beefing each other, but I still sell both the both of them. In this environment, the violence becomes the norm and leads to revenge. I hear about stabbings like it's normal. It's a cycle. Uh, I can't really stop because one person from one side has killed someone from the other side and you are not just going to forgive someone for that. You're going to go for them. Just draw blood from the person. That's what you want to see and it's going to carry on because now you've done that, someone's going to die. Someone's going to get shot. It's just going to happen. Uh, you can't trust people out there on the roads and if someone's trying to take what you made, you're going to retaliate. The proliferation of guns has upped the stakes dramatically. But well, if you're a pagan, if you're an up boy, wear your vest, shank proof, bulletproof, innit? Long gone past, you know, stabbing someone now. Now it's straight shooting people. Like, I know two people that got shot last week. Whereas before, knives used to be like the easiest things to get. That's what guns are nowadays. Guns are like as easy as getting candy. Like, all it takes is one phone call to get a gun nowadays. And a gun's an easier way to sort the situation. Your friend gets shot down, you want to shoot down a person. Same time, same day. It's as simple as that. The playing out of disputes known as beefs drive much of the violence. Beef is something that changes your life. When I go left, am I going to die? Am I going to go right? Am I going to die? You don't know because you're not safe. See, when you're with your gang, that's cool. But you see, when you leave them, you have to go home. Now, are they going to be waiting outside your house? One of the most dramatic shootouts on a London street was a result of a beef Quincy had with one of his rivals. Police have arrested two men in connection with a shooting outside a Croydon nightclub. The two men were arrested... In 2001, me and my friend Bugsy was on a motorbike looking for people that we had confrontation with over the past, like, month or so. And because my friend lived on this road, he had a car here on this road. So we thought, yeah, park up the bike, get in the car. As he stepped out of the car, all I heard was gunshots, like, pow, 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 pow. So I looked into my little wing mirror that I saw two people in bellies creeping up to my window with guns. So basically, I just took my Uzi out, stuck it out the window and just kept on squeezing. Looked out my wing mirror and I saw that they was running. So I jumped out the car, started chasing them. Obviously, I'm not a firearm specialist, innit? So I'm just like, you know, movie stuff. I'm just like, and you can hear all the cars going, ting, 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 ting. And then obviously they're running and they're hiding behind cars now. But then I saw an um, old man and a little girl and there was like cowering beside you know, the cars and that, innit? So what I done is I just went in the air like that, yeah? And when I went like that now, obviously they stopped and I told the old, the old man and the little girl to come across the street, innit? And they come across and I conveyed them across the street, innit? So obviously after I done that, I was furious for my friends. Everyone got armed up, dressed up, bulletproof vests, the whole lot, you know what I mean? Um, Marilyn Manson mask, the full works, we just went straight down to Croydon Pearly Way. Quincy and his gang headed for a known and popular nightclub in the area, where he knew his enemies would be. I saw them all around him and I just went brrr, sprayed them all. And obviously people got hit in their legs and that, and everyone scarped I got him, jumped, jumped back in the car, and we drove off in it. There were around 10, 15 police cars behind us. I said, boy, do you reckon we should start shooting? And everyone said, no, 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 you can't do that, you can't do that. So I said, how are we getting away? Because the amount of blue that I could see, my clothes was blue in the car, that's how much sirens was around us, do you know what I mean? So I just took the ooze, I just said, I didn't even listen. I just put it out the window, I was like, 
until it finished. Brrr, took my friend's gun. Brrr, 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 took my other friend's gun. Brrr, 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 brrr. Officers who gave chase were also fired at by a gunman in the car. The two men were arrested in West London yesterday after armed officers fired plastic bullets at their car, forcing it to stop. And then obviously I went caught, I got 14 years. This world changed my life basically, you know what I mean? There's definitely more access to guns nowadays, I think, than it was before. Because of Eastern European blocs, they're smuggling guns, they're posting things over. We people usually have to get these firearms to protect their business and just carry on the suits, basically, sometimes. The dispute is so serious that you have to keep carrying a firearm, no matter what. Gangs are willing to go to extreme lengths to protect their fellow members. All brothers, you feel me? No, none of us think we're better than each other. We've all got each other. Yet, man, down. Man, play for this shit in us. It's not leaving. None of us. Yeah. See, one phone call. Once we get a phone call, we don't need to hear who's there, what's happening. Come. What's all we need there? Come. Hear me? Rise them up. Come. Jimmy, we're there, really. All of us. No we're stalling. We're come in, yeah, Jimmy. Come. Do what we got to do, really. You feel me? Definitely. What's the of it? You're dead. Hear me? Or war, war. Hear me? I'm not playing games, innit? I'm killing niggas, innit? I'm drunk niggas, innit? Obviously, no one has to be in jail. Me personally, if I kill like five of my niggas, if I kill five niggas that I don't like right now, I'll go and lie down nice, I'll sleep. But we smart, innit? We get busy on bikes, fuck cars, innit? We don't go on cars. We use bikes only, bare bikes. So the man just wrap it down, go up to get me. I'm going to the ride, I'm to the ride, I just get, what are you, 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 You don't really want someone to fuck with your shit, you know? It's not in the plan. The plan is to flip and flip, make some more money. It's not like you got paperwork for everything and everything is definitely going to run smoothly and you got insurance for everything. Your strap is your insurance. You know, you keep protected. You know, you got a knife for young, you got knives. Keep protected, you know? You got to ensure yourself that you're going to be safe. Me, I'm quite small in it, so <laughs> it's, it's difficult. Definitely when I'm busting shots at that, a lot of people think they can take advantage. And when someone takes your food, that's your money, but then you've got to make a decision whether or not you're going to stab this person. But normally the time they're bigger than me, so it's not a lot that I can do. I know that, so it gave me the most I can do is stab them. And even if I stab them, they wouldn't take them down. You feel me? They could still hurt me. They could still take the knife and kill me in it. It wasn't long before violence entered Geordie's world, and he started facing serious problems with his operation in Hampshire. All well, new new shots were like coming to my to my to my country to my country spot, and they were just like taking over. Then it all started getting out of hand. I started seeing London niggas in my spot, and I'm thinking, what's going on? This is supposed to be Hampshire. I started seeing niggas walking around doing their thing as well. So I didn't really like that. They, they, they never really liked that. So things used to like get popping, get cracking. After that, I started getting into beef people and I had older, grown men putting on me to rob me. And that's when I started seeing things changing. And I'm a 20-year-old boy, I'm a 29-year-old boy. I've got these 29-year-olds on me, 30-year-olds on me that are known for big straps and they're trying to hunt man down. I didn't know about all these robbers and you had to be, you can't let everyone know your thing and then police getting involved and that's when things went downhill, innit? Being involved as a woman, you're basically dealt with the same reputation as, as your as your partner. So if they if they wanted to do something, they couldn't get their hands on him. You'd be the next port of call. So if that means coming into your house with a gun, holding a gun to your child's head and saying to you, "Where is the fucking money?" They will do it. Or police are bashing down your door and coming to arrest you, and your kids are scared. And it makes you step back and think, like, why am I in this life? Because I can tell you for a fact, all the holidays, all the cars, all the money, it's, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. You can never live a peaceful life when, when you're in a gang life, when you're in what they call a road life, which is gang culture, um, drugs, money, all that kind of thing. When you're in that, it's just stress. Just stress. 
Be prepared for confrontational images of violence, crime, and highly offensive language throughout. Some viewers may be extremely distressed by the real-life content and adult themes. Geordie was making a fortune with his drug gang selling crack and heroin in Hampshire, but that came to an end when he was finally arrested. Now he's set to appear in court on charges of possession and intent to supply. 6 grams of crack cocaine and 10 grams of heroin. Obviously I'm going to court for heroin. We intend to supply Class C. Do I reckon I'm going to go down? No, I, I don't think I'm going to go down, no. There's no evidence on me. So I just feel like it's a waste of my time. They can't make an example of me. They should leave me alone. If I was to go down, that would be surprising. Although confident he will beat the system, he knows he had taken his eye off the ball with his gang and drug business. I started getting lazy in that when the money started coming in. I was getting raving, popping bottles and that. So I wasn't as serious as I was because the people that were working for me started saying, right, this guy's serious, he's getting raving and that. I'm ringing his phone for the rig up, he's in a rave. Do you understand? I've seen jealousy and I've witnessed jealousy. See my own brothers hate on me. See my own gang hate on me. If you've got more money than them, they don't like it, do you understand? When you're in that lifestyle, people don't want to see you do good. Like, it's like everyone for yourself until you get to the top. Well, I started owing people money. Like, I was taking food off of them. And every time I was bagging it up, trying to show it, it just wasn't working no more. I'll lose, I'll lose, I'll lose my man's money. Then I'll go get food off another person, I'll lose that money. So it was just like a cycle, it was just, it was just getting long. Splashing the cash not only brought Geordie unwanted attention from his rivals, but also made him a target for the police. Fez, they knew me, man. My name was banging on the, on, on the road, like, I turned Feds. And they were communicating with Feds in the, in the city. Like, you know they're surveilling, you're still out there, you've got no choice because you're so used to that life, though, and you still got to get it. you got all these police officers on you, and you've got like, enemies on you. One of them's got to take you at the end of the day. And yeah, man, I got arrested with intent to supply Class C. Court appearance is over, and the case against Geordie has taken an unexpected turn. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. More evidence me. They're saying they got their fingerprints on the phone, their fingerprints on the on the package, on the food. They found more evidence on um on my case, innit? I'm sure I'm gonna bust it. I'm sure I'm gonna I'm gonna bust it. But yeah, man, it's it's, it's not looking healthy, innit? Trying to frame me that I'm possibly looking at two to four years and all that. I don't want to be here in that. Do you understand? Like, what's that? The case against Geordie is much more serious than he realized. He will now face trial at Crown Court and face the possibility of a long sentence. Jail and violence are a constant threat and many know they are living on borrowed time. I'm not trying to be out here to be gang gang for the rest of my life. You know, it gets deeper as long as I stay in this and then end up getting shot. You know, I've been subbed a few times. I ain't trying to get shot, I'll be honest with you. No, we're trying to get the money to get out. I ain't trying to chill here. Being the girl in this situation, you can't really do it. Like, how can I expect to grow up and settle down and have a child and have all this around me? I don't like this. I don't like sleeping and thinking that my daughter's going to go through every night. Once you're in it, it's, it's also hard to get back up. Once you're known for something, you can't just turn it off. Like, you never know like, who's plotting against you. And you never know when you're going to get caught. Like, you never know when, when it's your time. And so I, I'm, I am, I really and truly, I am scared. Like, I don't want to be that person on the news, 10 o'clock news, I don't want it to be my face. Every day of my life, I do fear for it. Like, every day I leave the front door, I do fear for it. This extreme violence is a way of life for gangs, but many young people are still prepared to take huge risks in the constant pursuit of money and a better way of life. Obviously we're out here, you get me? It's not the supplies man thing, we're trying to get some money to you get me? There's no opportunities for you then, so they get caught up, you get me? By the time they get caught up, it's too late. I'm trying to build youth clubs, I'm trying to do little camping trips for the youth, trying to give the youth them a better way. We stack our peas, you get me? We're trying to build businesses, you get me? We're trying to, we're trying to invest, we're not just trying to be out here, you get me? 24-7 for the rest of our lives, we're trying to get our families out of the world. Get me like, government don't care about us. They man's trying to get me, take care of our neighborhood, get me? 
make opportunities out there for people that are trying to better themselves. You get me? You get me? And if the government ain't gonna do it, then we gotta do it. And if it means getting busy, taking from my next man, if you are fam, it's gonna be done. Straight up. Oh Jesus. He's not coming back. The dick come to kill my son. I'm 16 and I've seen six people get stabbed and killed. It's like we're losing everyone that was close to us. Well, I don't know what if I would do if like one of my guys died, like I'd probably flip out, go crazy. And if you or anyone you know has been affected by any of the topics in this program, go to channel5.com slash gangland for more information and support. And don't miss the second part, Gangland Murder, new next Thursday night at 10 here on Channel 5. In just a moment, serious threats for the Can't Pay crew. Stay with us. Like every day I leave the front door, I do free effort. This extreme violence is a way of life for gangs, but many young people are still prepared to take huge risks in the constant pursuit of money and a better way of life. Obviously we're at it, you get me? It's not just a bad man thing I was trying to get some money to, you get me? There's no opportunities for you then, so they get caught up, you get me? By the time they get caught up, it's too late. I was trying to build youth clubs, I was trying to do little camping trips for the youth, trying to give the youth them a better way. We stack our peas, you get me? We're trying to build businesses, you get me? We're trying to, we're trying to invest, we're not just trying to be out here, you get me? 24-7 for the rest of our lives, we're trying to get our families out of the world. Get me like, government don't care about us. The man's trying to get me, take care of our neighborhood. Get me, make opportunities out there for people that are trying to better themselves. Get me, get me. And if the government ain't gonna do it, then we gotta do it. And if it means getting busy, taking from my next man, if you are fam, it's gonna be done. Straight up. Violence is a way of life for gangs, but many young people are still prepared to take huge risks in the constant pursuit of money and a better way of life. Obviously we're at it, you get me? It's not just a bad man thing, I was trying to get some money to, you get me? There's no opportunities for the youth then, so they get caught up, you get me? By the time they get caught up, it's too late. I was trying to build youth clubs, I was trying to do little camping trips for the youth, trying to give the youth them a better way. We stack our peas, you get me? We're trying to build businesses, you get me? We're trying to, we're trying to invest, we're not just trying to be out here, you get me? 24-7 for the rest of our lives, we're trying to get our families out of the world. Get me like, government don't care about us. The man's trying to get me, take care of our neighborhood. Get me, make opportunities out there for people that are trying to better themselves. Get me, get me. And if the government ain't gonna do it, then we gotta do it. And if it means getting busy, taking from my next man, if you are fam, it's gonna be done. Straight up. Oh, Jesus. He's not coming back. The dick come to kill my son. I'm 16 and I've seen six people Get stabbed and, and someone's trying to take what you made, you're going to retaliate. The proliferation of guns has upped the stakes dramatically. But well, if you're a pagan, if you're an up boy, wear your vest, shank proof, bulletproof, innit? Long gone past, you know, stabbing someone now. Now it's straight shooting people. Like, I know two people that got shot last week. Whereas before, Knives used to be like the easiest things to get. That's what guns are nowadays. Guns are like as easy as getting candy. Like all it takes is one phone call to get a gun nowadays and a gun's an easier way to sort the situation. Your friend gets shot down, you want to shoot down a person. Same time, same day. It's as simple as that. The playing out of disputes known as beefs drive much of the violence. Beef is something that changes your life. When I go left, am I going to die? Am I going to go right? Am I going to die? You don't know because you're not safe. See, when you're with your gang, that's cool. But you see, when you leave them, you have to go home now. Selves. I was born for this, you get me? Big guns and everything, you see me? Any spares. You get busy. Niggas know. Check the crime rate, you get me? Check it. But we don't stab in it. We shoot niggas in it, you get me? Every, everyone on my team has hit something, yeah? Everyone. Fuck yeah. it, put it like that. This is the mini street so you can get me. Mini street so you can get me. You get me? But man, go on missions with these ones. I'll we'll get low, innit? You get me? Man, get slow. If you see a nigga go on one knee, just no, it's no joke. You get me? Blow niggas. Blow niggas. Police state that there are over 3,000 young people involved in street gangs in London alone. It 
It's a dangerous place where shootings, stabbings, and murder have become an unfortunate way of life. During the course of filming, contributors to this series have been sent to jail for knife possession, shot, and murder. Blood. Now he's set to appear in court on charges of possession and intent to supply. Six grams of crack cocaine and ten grams of heroin. Also, I'm getting called for hearing. We intend to supply Class C. Do I reckon I'm going to go down? No, I, I don't think I'm going to go down, no. There's no evidence on me. So I just feel like it's a waste of my time. They can't make an example of me. They should leave me alone. If I was to go down, that would be surprising. Although confident he will beat the system, he knows he had taken his eye off the ball with his gang and drug business. I started getting lazy in that when the money started coming in. I was getting raving, popping bottles and that. So I wasn't as serious as I was because the people that were working for me started seeing, right, this guy's serious, he's getting raving and that. I'm ringing his phone for the re-up, he's in a rave. Do you understand? I've seen jealousy and I've witnessed jealousy. See my own brothers hate on me. See my own gang hate on me. If you've got more money, then they don't like it, do you understand? When you're in that lifestyle, people don't want to see you do good. Like, it's like everyone... This is a world where young gangs are robbing each other for drugs and money at gunpoint. And the weapons are fueling a seemingly never-ending cycle of violence. For those involved in the culture, age often determines what weapons are used. This is the little niggas. That girl and that. Don't play with nice, but me. From my start, it's like I never went back in it. From my, my boss, my team once. I just kept busting the sniper and you start smoking. You don't stop in it. You get me? I can't stop. You get me? I check the finger. The roads, that's how, got, that's how I survived. I think I was actually 14 when I got nicked with to the supplier, and I got sentenced at 15. After going to prison for supplying Class 8 drugs, Jordy's mum sent him away to Paris to live with his dad. However, this new life on the continent would only serve to fuel his gang ambitions. Be prepared for confrontational images of violence, crime, drug trafficking, including bodily secretion of drugs and highly offensive language throughout. Some viewers may be extremely distressed by the real-life content and adult themes. Jordy grew up in London, selling drugs for the local gang, the Woolwich Boys. After going to prison for selling crack and heroin at 15, his mum sent him to Paris to live with his dad. But this is where Jordy gained the insight that would draw him even further. Sean on the outskirts of Paris is a regular spot that the gang sell their drugs from. There's weed, ash as well. Obviously over there they smoke a bit of ash as well. Sixty pounds for the big bags. Twenty bags for the small for the small bags. Thirty pound. There's ten ten ten. There's ten there as well. Little ten 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 there. Good shit. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. His cousin AK explains how he started running his gang. Moi, ici, ça c'est mon bloc, hein? Tout ça c'est à moi, à mes amis. Point de chute là, ici drogue, shit, marijuana, zeb, en bas, cocaïne, héroïne. Moi, je suis arrivé ici, j'avais 8 ans. 8 ans, je suis arrivé ici, j'ai déjà trouvé des gens. C'est-à-dire moi, j'ai trouvé des gens ici sur place. Ils m'ont accueilli, m'ont ouvert les bras, m'ont venu avec eux, m'ont accueilli. Show them love, they show them love. Voilà, on va faire ça. C'est comme ça, c'est comme ça. In Paris, a gang will control the selling of drugs across an entire how playing out of disputes known as beefs drive much of the violence. Beef is something that changes your life. When I go left, am I gonna die? Am I gonna go right? Am I gonna die? You don't know because you're not safe. See, when you're with your gang, that's cool. But you see, when you leave them, you have to go home. Now, are they gonna be waiting outside your house? 
One of the most dramatic shootouts on a London street was a result of a beef Quincy had with one of his rivals. Police have arrested two men in connection with a shooting outside a Croydon nightclub. The two men were arrested... In 2001, me and my friend Bugsy was on a motorbike looking for people that we had a confrontation with over the past, like, month or so. And because my friend lived on this road, he had a car here on this road. So we thought, yeah, park up the bike, get in the car. As he stepped out of the car, all I heard was gunshots, like, pa 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 pa. So I looked into my little wing mirror. Then I saw two people in bellies creeping up to my window with guns. So basically, I just took my Uzi out, stuck it out of the window and just kept on squeezing. Looked out my wing mirror and I saw that they was running. So I jumped out of the car, started chasing them. Obviously, I'm not hot. Obviously, from young, I was literally posted that side of my ass like this. This is where things used to go down. But now we're going upstairs. It's a statue here, but it's locked. It's locked, man. You can see anyone that's coming, jump on the roof if police come, normal. I was functioning like, yo, I just turned into a monster then, so I won't gonna handle me. I'm gonna get kicked out of every single school that I've been to. I don't even think I learned anything from any school. I feel I just learned on the roads. That's how I got, that's how I survived. I think I was actually 14 when I got nicked, moving to the supplier, and I got sentenced at 15. After going to prison for supplying Class 8 drugs, Geordie's mum sent him away to Paris to live with his dad. However, this new life on the continent would only serve to fuel his gang ambitions. Often referred to as a G-Pack, he uses a condom to house his parcel. It's not unusual to carry a number of these drug packages at one time, though the risk involved is huge. I had to do things in it to keep my freedom. And it had to be done, so I done it. So I had to put things up my ass. I had to plug things up my ass. Doing trips on the motorway. Doing probably three trips, plugging drugs, like at least three, four G-packs. Like one G-pack, two G-pack, three G-packs, four G-packs. A gang supplier films the extreme measures he goes to in order to hide his valuable stash from the police and his enemies. We had to go to like nasty extents where customers are ringing every minute, every time. We're unplugging, plugging, unplugging, plugging, unplugging. And more times when we're unplugging, there's shit there. So literally we're just scraping the shit off the parcels, untaking it, literally unhygienic. Like. Uh, Gucci this, Gucci that. They were luxury clothing and this guy was wearing them on a daily basis like they were nothing. And I was just like, wow, this guy has kind of got a lot of cash. You know, don't just fall in love with that person, you kind of fall in love with the lifestyle as well. And then he approaches you, oh, can you get involved? Can you do this for me or can you do that for me? And you're like, you're thinking about it and you think, oh, why not? He's done all this for me or he's... You just think, like, why not? Why, why shouldn't I really help? We're not always victims. Women are not always victims. Same way there is a different level for guys, there's different levels to us. So you have what you most probably hear about all the time, women get abused, they get um, passed around, stuff like that. They're the, kind of, they're the kind of bottom of the pile. A lot of the guys that like, will have sex with them and just basically do what they want with them, treat them like shit. And then you've got the next kind of level, which is the some time-ish girlfriend, the girl that they go back to when they wanted a bit of loving or um, things like that. All the money really wouldn't be spent on her. She'd probably get a Nando's here and there. That's about it. When you go up to the full like girlfriend, they would know the business and be involved. And then you've got the next one up, which is like the wifey, the one that doesn't see anything. Um, she knows what her guy does. She, she knows full well what he does, but she doesn't get involved. East London gang that is part of this lucrative trade, filmed as one of their crack dealers prepared drugs for sale. He begins by chopping crack into individual rocks that are sold for £20 each. He makes a parcel containing £1,000 worth of crack, often referred to as a G-pack. He uses a condom to house his parcel. It's not unusual to carry a number of these drug packages at one time, though the risk involved is huge. I had to do things in it 
to keep my freedom. And it had to be done. So I done it. So I had to put things up my ass. I had to plug things up my ass. Doing trips on the motorway. Doing probably three trips, plugging drugs, like at least three, four G packs. Like one G pack, two G pack, three G packs, four G packs. A gang supplier films the extreme measures he goes to in order to hide his valuable stash from the police and his enemies. We had to go to like nasty extents where customers are ringing every minute, every time. We're unplugging, plugging, unplugging, plugging, unplugging. And more times when we're unplugging, there's shit there. So literally, we're just scraping the shit off the parcels, untaking it, literally unhygienic, like mad, serving, plugging it again, taking it back out. It was a serious organisation that had to come with serious risk and nasty, nasty things. It's like standing there deal with a devil that, yeah, lose your dignity, you lose your name, but I'll give you money at the end of it. That's the extent we had to go to to keep a business running. And that's how determined we was. Jordy was making just over £2,000 a day and at the top of his game. I'm telling you, everything got achieved. The cars got achieved. The bitches got achieved. I had everything you could want. I'm talking penthouses, Range Rovers, black, the white one, Mercs. I wasn't even driving. That's how bad it is. I was getting them out for people to drive me in them. I was a spender. I was getting parties, popping bottles, models, doing crazy shit. I was getting holidays at Ibiza, Spain, Barcelona. I'm talking every single brand name, Giuseppe's, Balenciaga, Gucci, Louis, all of that, I had all of that, I done that. I never had that at the young. You can, how, how could you be humble? How could you be humble when you come from nothing? It just felt, it felt amazing, man. I was living like a footballer. Cause I thought I was gonna get 2,200 every day until I, I die. That's how you actually think. That's what the people do it for. Undeniably, the allure of fast money is irresistible to many. You know, you do fall in love with the money. By the time people are going to work in the morning, I've made your week wage in a day. Profit. So, you're going to want to do that for the rest of the month, for the rest of the year. A lot of gangs make a lot of money. With the trucks and having nice shoes. You feel me having the top Louis Vuitton belt, looking the part, walking down the road, looking like the big person. That's, that's what it is when you're in that time when you feel like nobody can touch you. As the money came rolling in for Jordi and his gang, he and Alicia got a taste of the big league. In, in gang culture, guys at the top of the blocks and stuff like that, it is very much like the football culture. The, like, oh, you know when you get the uh, wags, the footballers' wives and stuff like that. Very much like that. Everybody used to know us in the raids. When we walked in, everybody knew us. We used to be really well-dressed. We used to be coordinating most of the time. It brings respect from from people. Yeah, man, I, I love that lifestyle, man. I thought it would never end. I thought it would never end, man. I thought I was going to be like this forever and ever and ever. prepared for confrontational images of violence, crime, drug trafficking, and highly offensive language throughout. Some viewers may be extremely distressed by the real-life content and adult themes. The drug economy is key to the young street gangs operating across London. But their enterprise and endeavor count for little without the genuine means to protect themselves and intimidate others. This is a world where young gangs are robbing each other for drugs and money at gunpoint. And the weapons are fueling a seemingly never-ending cycle of violence. For those involved in the culture, age often determines what weapons are used. This is the little niggas that are growing up. Not play with nice, but me, from my side, it's like I never went back in it. From my boss, my team once. 
this kept busting. It's like when you start smoking, you don't stop in it. You get me? I can't stop. You get me? My trigger fingers got chicken pox. Man, it's mad. Mad. Itching. Itching. Jumpy. You see me? The resulting gang violence has left its mark on local communities. I've known violence all my life, basically. As far back as I can remember. Brixton was a no-go zone. Basically, this is, this is the front line, isn't it? This is where everything happened, isn't it? Quincy entered the gang world at the age of just 13. As he established his gang career, he gained a reputation for violence. The gang I was in was called the 28s. And basically, we were based in Brixton. It was like a setup friends that kind of turned into brothers that really never had no one apart from each other because most of us are probably homeless or just living on the streets. We got the kind of never say die, protect our area from other area kind of attitude. We used to stick together, fight together, represent Brixton and made Brixton kind of a fearful place. And that's why Brixton was kind of no-go zone for nearly every gang that existed at the time. I got more serious with it. More fighting, I'll be the first to fight now, don't worry, I'll sort him out, bang. And that's how I got my kind of name for myself. My name was based off kind of knocking people out. Violence was very key in me growing up around my area within my gang. Because without the violence, I wasn't Quincy. Do you know what I mean? I was just a normal kid. But with the violence, I became somebody. As Quincy and the 28s got older, their crimes and behaviour became more serious. This is where we kind of changed. We kind of got worse. We started to take, we started to smoke crack. And we started to just rob nearly everyone in the local areas to take more bars, watch people coming out the bank, rob them. But you're still smoking at least six, seven hundred pounds of crack every night. We buy more crack, our habits are getting stronger and stronger. And then around here, hasn't even got enough money for us no more. So we're venturing out and starting to rob banks and stuff. But the crack obviously made us more braver to obtain that bigger money and bigger lifestyle. I became respected, I became feared. And so. My violence kept me at the top of my circle, my peers. Today, street gangs are still reckless, now specializing in robbing cash-rich drug dealers and other gangs. Crack suppliers Bonnie and Clyde discuss the violence that underpins their world. Ain't no one gonna fuck with me because they know that I'll shoot you, or I'll stab you if you come around and you, you try anything because I don't want nothing to jeopardize my money. That's just the way it is, there's no rules, but you've got to know how to, to play the game. Things become more dangerous when supplying drugs to rival gangs. One gang will have better food and the other gang won't. So a lot of the time like, we'll buy food off one gang and then sell it to another gang. Or you don't want to get caught to selling to both sides. But I've got to make my money somehow, I don't care what I'm selling to. These people may be beefing each other, but I still sell well for both of them. In this environment, the violence becomes the norm and leads to revenge. I hear about stabbings like it's normal. It's a cycle that I can't really stop because one person from one side has killed someone from the other side and you are not just going to forgive someone for that. You're going to go for them. Just draw blood from the person. That's what you want to see and it's going to carry on because now you've done that, someone's going to die. Someone's going to get shot. It's just going to happen. You can't trust people out there on the roads and someone's trying to take what you made, you're going to retaliate. The proliferation of guns has upped the stakes dramatically. Well, if you're a pagan, if you're an up boy, wear your vest, shank proof, bulletproof, innit? Long gone past, you know, stabbing someone now. Now it's straight shooting people. Like, I know two people that got shot last week. Whereas before, knives used to be like the easiest things to get. That's what guns are nowadays. Guns are like as easy as getting candy. Like, all it takes is one phone call to get a gun nowadays, and a gun's an easier way to sort the situation. Your friend gets shot down, you want to shoot down a person. Same time, same day. It's as simple as that. 